In this second video, we're going to explore a little bit about how Vivaldi uses the violin as a virtuoso instrument. So, first of all, we know that he himself was a violinist of some repute, um, and he wrote a lot of concerti out of the 600 plus that he wrote for the violin for himself to play in various occasions. And we have things like extended cadenzas, which explore the very upper regions of the violin. You have to basically scratch your own nose, you go so high on the fingerboard. Um, and, uh, and he also taught the girls at the Pietà orphanage, and some of them were virtuoso violinists, so we also know that um, he wrote some of those concertos for the girls uh, uh, whose names even come down to us. So, for example, the violinist called Anna Maria was a great, great player, and she got very difficult concerti to play, and so on. Now, in the Four Seasons, it's, uh, there are some choice examples of how Vivaldi uses this instrument as a vehicle for um, impressive virtuosity. So let's explore just a few of them and see what in those elements of music makes it actually virtuosic. So for example, um, if I take um, uh, one passage that goes, um, let me just find a note. <laughs> Then what have you got? What you've got is an arpeggio going up, which is very high, and every note is played twice. So instead of playing, yeah, you go, which already makes it much more impressive. And then he starts doing what we call in the in the trade bariolage. Bariolage is playing uh, strings crossings one after the other in the up and down. So for example. Uh, or would be a bariolage. So he explores that to great effect because he goes, when he got up to the scale, I play each string once and I change the notes on the upper string. By doing that, you get this blur of sound, and because he uses the open string, the D, and then A, which is actually a harmonic of the D, he opens up the whole instrument. And that's why it sounds like possibly a section of violins, uh, just because of the use that he makes of the natural properties of the instrument, the open string, the harmonics, um, and the fact that the, the string resonates even if I don't play it. So if you just listen to the D string resonating here, Yes, you can still hear the D string resonating. So that's what he uses. He uses the acoustic properties of the instruments to make it um, open up. And that's something that he does to very, very great effect. Then, just as I finish that, I go... Or something like that. So what have we got there? We've got a scale coming down. and so on and so forth. Yes, so we've got, um, we've got a, scale, a scale going down, um, and um, those scale, that scale is doubled, so it's, it doesn't always go eh. And then when I got, get down to the G string, and stay in position, and that uh, you can see that my left hand is quite high on the fingerboard, that's difficult to do, so that increases the kind of virtuoso element. Um, when I get down to, the, to, the, to my G string, then I get a bariolage effect with the G string and the D string, which goes basically on open strings. Yes, except that I change the notes high up in position on the G string, it goes like this. And that's also something that he uses to great effect, to increase the difficulty level of the thing. Now, if I take something like autumn, for example, we've got Again, you see the repeated notes, which is a little bit of a leitmotiv in Vivaldi's writing. And all he does is play arpeggios, repeated notes and arpeggios. So I have a F, F major arpeggio, but high. Yes, this is when, when, when in the autumn someone gets drunk. So he becomes very persuasive and very uh, argumentative. So therefore I repeat this arpeggio about four times. 
Then I come down with the hand, you saw my hand going swiftly down, and I repeat another arpeggio with repeated notes. <laughs> So he explores from up to down, the two extremes of the instrument, with an arpeggio, <laughs> which is not very difficult, but when you have the repeated notes added to it, it becomes much more difficult. And then, having, having, having done that, you go up again with your hands and you do scales. So what happens here? You've got a scale, F, show F major scale coming down, but in position high. Yes, and very fast. Now that could be played on the recorder, but the recorder couldn't do this. That little note, which means that I skip some strings and go to the lower string I have, then come back to the upper string and go down in sequence, step by step. Having done that, I then go. So that's basically ornamentation on a scale. Yes, that's the structure, but he adds a little ornamented, a little more dense. Which means that you have to get with your hand very quickly up, step by step by step by step, with your first finger. That makes it much more difficult. Another example could be the last moment of autumn, where the solo violin goes like this. <laughs> so you have a few elements here. You have the arpeggios that I talked about with the repeated notes. <laughs> You have scales in sequence. <laughs> and then you have something which you haven't got before, which is big string crossings skipping over a string. So I have basically four strings on the instrument, E, A, D, and G. And if I play the E string and the A string, and then don't play the D string, but skip to the, to the, to the G string, then I get a pattern that goes like this. So basically I play on the E string, A string, mostly on the E string, skip the intervening strings, and I have a bass note repeated on that string. Now that's difficult to do because you can't touch that string. And it sounds jagged and interesting. Um, and again, it's difficult. Um, Vivaldi is such a good violinist that he basically makes the violin sound even more virtuosic than the difficulty level. So something like this, for example, sounds very impressive. It's actually, for a well-trained violinist, not that difficult to do. And that is a sign of a great master using the violin as a virtuoso instrument. <laughs>